the physical testing stage. Is it going to make or break a player in in any in the NHL draft? I don't think so. But when you're a guy like Nick Lardis, who has a lot to prove, who you know didn't necessarily have that high end draft pedigree, you put yourself on the map a little bit when you have when you're a top performer in a number of of events. So I was just wondering, Mike, from from the physical testing standpoint, if there were any other standout performers, different things that you heard from either scouts or strength and conditioning, whoever you may have talked to or other players about that process and and some of the standouts from that yeah i mean first off I'll, you know I'll, I'll get to your last question there chris with regard to some of the standouts and it's funny and, and i'll start with lardis because he had uh he had 15 pull-ups and it's interesting yeah. here is that you know connor bedard went and did 14 pull-ups and he he, <laughs> he jumped to the top of the list and then nick lardis comes in with the 15 spot so you're like wow that's 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 you know quite a lot for, yeah. for Nick to come in and, and do that. So Bedard, you know, fourteen pull ups, and he was actually tied with with Danny Nelson uh, of the NTTP. Yep. Uh, Bradley Nadeau of uh, Penticton was in there too, and I, I believe defenseman Cam Allen of Guelph also also had fourteen. Yes. But in a, in yeah. addition to the pull ups, Lourdes had the highest uh, vertical jump. Um, so he he was right in there, you know, as far as the testing goes. I know defenseman Jordan Turne of Sherwinigan in the queue led all players in the VO2 max test. I think it was a little over 13 and a half minutes. Michael Robble yeah, of Omaha. To, <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is. It, oh, it's 13. <laughs> are you kidding me? 13 and a half? No. Um, no, thank uh, you. It, yeah. <laughs> Bedard, I think, lasted 12 minutes uh, on the VHR, which yeah. is also kind of yeah, insane. Yeah, Bedard, we, we, that, that, we should mention that. Like, Connor Bedard had a very good combine and had he zero did. reason yes. to participate. Like, I mean, there was nothing, nothing yeah. to gain from it. And that speaks, I think, a little bit to the competitive drive of Connor Bedard that he's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking anything for granted. Uh, Adam Fantilli and Leo Carlson, if I'm not mistaken, did not participate, but they, they did just come back from the world championship. So totally understandable to not... Because there is some level of training that has to go into preparing for this. Because you can't just go in and just do all those. You have to have some level of training, and a lot of the players do have time. Those two guys didn't have as much time. And you know what, Chris? As a follow up there, and, and something I thought that was interesting, Yomo Kekalainen, GM for Columbus, actually spoke later on, on on Saturday when the combine was almost coming to a close, and he said two interesting things um, that I want to share. First, he was asked about the Fantilli and Carlson opting out of the testing. And and believe it or not, he was disappointed that, that they didn't hmm. test. He he said, you know, I think they could have at least sort of showed up, in my opinion, gone through some of the testing. He says, if you're not medically cleared to test, then no problem. But, you know, I think it would have been good to see them test, go through the floor and do some of the tests if they could do that. And it wouldn't have any lingering effects uh, from their season that just ended. So I, I kind of thought, I kind of yeah, thought that's interesting, isn't that isn't that interesting? Like Yoma would, but, go, but now go neither out. one of them has an advantage over the other <laughs> in the, the right. Blue Jackets room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but the other thing too that I want to share is is Kirk um We we asked him like, is there any particular test that you really watch or that your scouts really view as important? And he says he watches the three vertical jumps uh, real closely, the vertical leap, uh, the squat jump, and the no arm jump. So all three are performed on a force plate, right? Uh, yep. And the leaps are measured by inches uh, of lift off the plate. So uh, Yarmo, uh, and uh, I'm trying to remember the quote, he said, if, if there's a concern about skating and the guy can't get off the force plate, that kind of confirms the concerns that you have on yep. skating. And then on the other hand, if you see someone who looks really fast on the ice, like the players we just spoke of, Oliver Moore, you know, uh, Kerry Tarrant, uh, then they can fly off that thing. It's like, okay, there's a reason why he's such a good skater. So, I, you know, I thought that was that was interesting that Yarmo kind of has that yeah. in the back of mind thinking about those kind of aspects of the, tra of the testing part. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, like, that that was something that he did. That was actually, that is also the one that I look closest at as well for that yep. reason. And, and a guy like Nick Lardis, who is a good skater, but I don't think anybody would call him an elite skater in the class. He's certainly one of the better skaters, but like he was, he dominated at those, those kind of things. And so that gives you a whole different 
kind of perspective on 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 that or it or or it confirms things or it gives you reason to concern have have other concerns you know other high-end athletes some of the big guys you mentioned danny nelson he's a bigger player you know going it's hard for big guys to do the pull-ups like that and he he managed to crush you know 14 of those um you know the vo2 max and different things like that they they certainly help a lot to to you know judge athleticism. I think sometimes on the pull-ups, you're looking to see if, you know, is it, how hard is a guy going to fight to make this work? Um, you know, and, and so there's all different kind of things that come from it. Um, but yeah, but really fascinating real quick, stuff from Yarmo as well. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick. As you're talking there, Chris, I'm remembering, you know, in years past, right. A, a big deal was made over the fact of a player such as Sam Bennett, Casey Middlestack couldn't complete a, a single chin up right at the combine. Yeah, yeah, and, and here yeah. you have Bennett, has already played nine full NHL seasons. He reached the Stanley Cup final, uh, a valiant effort by, by the Florida Panthers. And then Middlestat just finished his fifth season w- with the Sabres, had career highs and goals, assist points, I believe. So you know what? You just have to push, right, Chris? That, that, that's what it's yeah. all about. As long as you show these scouts, these general managers, that you're willing to give maximum effort. And if that means struggling to maybe get even one pull-up, then it's then it's worth it. That's what they want to see. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I, I think I think the combine is 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 very interesting. Like you know, and a lot of the you know you'll see the GMs and you'll probably see scouting directors there, but like they send a lot of their area scouts home. That they, they let the strength and conditioning coaches yeah. watch those things. You know, so they get reports on that as well. But you know, it's always fascinating to see who's there watching, and they are watching, and they're not watching because they want to see the. They'll get the numbers later. They want to see how the guy looks while doing it, and and I think it's just that that push for more and more information. 